If you've ever wondered what's the hardest part about extending your property, well, I guess this is the hardest part. Hiya folks, welcome back to our self-build extension project. I'm Andy Mack and over the last, what, five months-ish, we have been working our way through this self-build extension and a lot of people have asked, what is the hardest part about doing an extension, doing a building project like this? Whether you've got builders in doing the work for you or whether you're kind of managing the build yourself, I can tell you right now, this is the hardest part. So later on in this video, I'm gonna give you a tour of where we are to date because we are so close to being finished so i'll give you a complete tour of the whole property so you can see where we are and then probably the next video after this will be the the completely finished project but i did want to explain first why things are so difficult at the minute i am standing at the moment in our living room and our whole living room is packed up but to understand why the living room is packed up we need to rewind a little bit you see when we moved into this property or when we bought this property one of the first things that had to go was the kitchen because the whole kitchen floor had to come up everything in the kitchen had to be ripped out and, and redone from scratch and that wasn't going to be staying as a kitchen anyway because our new kitchen is going to be in the rear extension over there so we ripped out the old kitchen ripped up the floor replaced the floor and then we put a temporary kitchen where the old kitchen used to be and to be fair it's the best temporary kitchen we've ever had on a building project so we're not complaining too much but we are a family of four living in the property and we've been surviving for the last nine or ten months with just a camping stove for cooking we have got an old oven as well so that does help but although the novelty can be quite fun to start off with trust me after you've spent nine or ten months living out of a temporary kitchen, uh, yeah, it starts to wear a bit thin after a while. On top of that, because we are currently building a new bedroom over the garage, it means that we don't actually have a bedroom for, for me and Mrs. Mac. So we have been living out of what was the dining room. And because we don't have an office at the moment, the bedroom is also where we do all of our work. So we've got the, all the computer equipment set up in there. It's where I do all of the editing and everything. So it's kind of a bit of a bed sit of a bedroom, but at least we had the living room to chill out in. We had quite a functional living room, but we always knew that by the time we do the knock through, and especially by the time we start on the plastering, which sneak peek you can kind of see a little bit of, but we knew that the living room would be out of action at that point so effectively what it means is that we have been living out of just one room in the house the kids have got their rooms and they're sorted so that's kind of quite important that the kids have got their space but for me and mrs mark our bedroom is now not just a bedroom but it's also an office and it's also our living room as well we literally sleep work and eat in the same room and trust me after a while the novelty starts to wear off on that one so essentially yes the kids have got their rooms more or less done but we don't have a bedroom for us we don't have a kitchen we don't have a living room even the temporary kitchen we've got the plasterers have been doing work in there so there is just well i'll show you that in a minute Mrs. Mack's busy cleaning it up at the moment. We don't have anywhere to store stuff. We just have stuff just piled up all over the place. I'm literally sitting here looking at an enormous pile of leftover scraps of plasterboard in the corner where our television normally is. We don't have an office, so we've got nowhere to work. The garden is just kind of a half dug up quagmire. Even after four or five skips, there just seems to be an endless amount of rubbish. We've got a toilet in our back garden. Everywhere you look at the minute is just covered in dust, empty paint pots, paint brushes that are just drying out all over the place. And on top of that, it's just started raining and we don't have any proper drainage for the rainwater at the minute. So 
So yeah, I think we can safely say if you've ever wondered what's the hardest part of a build, this is the hardest part of the build. But on the plus side, if you are familiar with the story called a squash and a squeeze, well, I'll not explain the full story, but the crux of it is, is that things can only get easier from this point onwards, touch wood. I'll show you the bedroom extension in a minute, but check out our kitchen. The plasterers have literally just finished. They've just left like a couple of hours ago. It took them best part of a week, well, I don't know, probably about three or four days to do the full plastering of the rear extension. So it was quite a lot of work involved. The walls were all dotted and dabbed and then full skim of the entire room, including the ceiling, all the splayed windows and everything. They've done as per usual, they've done an absolutely brilliant job. We ended up covering up the render at the back of the house just because they're working outside with like hose and buckets and cleaning their tools and everything and muck can spray up onto the fresh render so we wanted to protect the back of the house so all we did was clamp some tarpaulins onto the guttering all of that can come down now I'll show you the garage in a future video because we haven't got any lights yet. The plasterers have also done a lovely job of plastering out the nook. This was the old window in the old kitchen. We were going to board it flush, it's boarded flush on the other side, but we decided rather than boarding it completely flush on this side, we might as well keep it as a little nook for shelving because you can never have too much storage in a property and this room is effectively going to become a giant pantry come storage area. We've got loads of room for like a chest freezer if we want one. We can always potentially add a downstairs toilet in here as well. This is a relatively big space and having this as just effectively a spare room is just a fantastic addition to the property. If you remember on the original plans this was going to be a corridor but we decided not to knock through here make it so that you get into the kitchen via the living area and it means that this is now an actual functional usable storage space and while yes we've lost an additional access route through into the kitchen it means that we've actually ended up kind of with a bigger kitchen because we can now run units all the way around the wall on the other side of this and we've ended up with a really functional storage room. Mrs Mack has started on the mammoth task of cleaning up after the plasterers We'll head upstairs, slight spoiler as to the colour of our hallway, Mrs Mark's been doing a sterling job out here, which reminds me I promised I would finish off these uh, high up bits that she can't reach. But anyway, let me show you the extension over the garage. The doors aren't staying brown like this by the way, they will become white eventually, uh, although the brown does actually go quite well with the uh, green but uh, the, these doors are in a bit of a state actually when you see them close up. Anyway, through into the bedroom. The next time you see this, it'll be a completely finished room, but we're just doing all of the final bits and pieces in here, really. All of the second fix and starting to fit the ensuite. All of the second fix electrics is now done in here. I've got the door frame to fit. This is just kind of, it's not attached yet. It's just loosely sitting there, but that's ready to go in. Most of the first fix plumbing is now in and done. I needed to pick up a few things from Screwfix just to finish off this little bit at the bottom here. As you can see, what I've done is I've embedded all the pipe work in the bottom section of the wall so that it'll be behind the skirting boards. So there will be nigh on no pipe work on display at all. 
There will be a tiny little bit of boxing around here just where the waste runs through into the soil stack. But other than that, it should look pretty good. One slightly weird thing, we've just used Dulux Trade um, bathroom paint and it's very shiny. I don't know if you can kind of see, it's supposed to be soft sheen, but uh, yeah, it's unusually shiny, which is a little bit disappointing, but there's not a lot we can do about it now. Anyone from Dulux watch this? What's going on with the paint? I've never seen soft sheen paint look this shiny before, but well, whatever. By the time all the stuff's in the room, I don't think you'll notice it. Towel rails all in and installed. As I say, all of the first fix for the showers in. I've just, what I like to do is leave a couple of uh, taps on the end just to flush the pipes out before we connect everything up. So all of this is loose at the minute. That board's not attached. All the pipes aren't clipped in yet because we need to do a final kind of test check for leaks. Give it all a good flush out and then we'll attach all of that, get all of the elements board covering this up and then we can get it all tiled out, get the shower tray in. So a couple more days work and that'll get the ensuite finished. Similar story on this side, ignore that kind of flexi hose connected to there. It will be rigid piping to the loo. The service valves are going to be in a little bit of boxing at the back here that you'll access via the skirting board so it'll be really easy to get to and it means it's a little bit less unsightly doing it that way. I know everyone's going to go nuts about this because I hot and cold are the wrong way around. It's just the way that it's ended up being easiest getting the pipes out. It's flexi hoses that connect the tap up anyway. You'll see once it's all done, it, it makes not a scrap of difference what way around these pipes are. It's just, it's the neatest way of bringing everything in. When you see the final kind of thing, it'll make sense. And then over in the bedroom itself, we've got all of the skirting all of the architraves, we've got all of the sanitary wear ready to fit into the bathroom. Over on this side we've got like the shower tray and the shower screen, all the fittings and things. Lots and lots of tools up here at the minute because things are, I want to get this room pretty much completely finished within the next few days because we need to get the carpet ordered and things. Although until everything is signed off by building regs, we don't want to put the carpet down. Just on the off chance that for whatever reason we need to lift the floor back up, but touch wood, that should be all okay. That radiator isn't connected yet, mainly because we're going to have to obviously drain down the system when we connect all the radiators up. And I only want to drain down the system once, so once we've got the kitchen radiator on the wall, then we'll drain everything down and we'll connect all the radiators up at the same time because we've got the kitchen one to do, this one and the towel rail in the ensuite as well. Oh, and that reminds me, this thing here, this is what's known as an air admittance valve or a Durgo valve it gets called. And a lot of you asked, why don't we just put a Durgo on top of the soil stack that's coming from the ensuite? And the reason is, is that building control want at least one open vent on the system. Mrs. Monk has been very busy on the decorating, by the way, as you can see. First coat is almost done in here. Uh, we kind of we had stuff leaning against the wall over there and we've still got that wall to do, which we can't do because there's loads of stuff leaning against it. But yeah, Mrs. Mark has been absolutely plowing on with the decorating. So this has just got the first coat done at the moment and we'll do the second coat once all of the skirtings and everything are all installed because the walls are inevitably going to get mucky once I've got my chop saw up here and I start making a bit of a mess. So we'll get the skirtings, all the second fix woodwork installed, we'll get the door installed and then we'll do the final coat of paint. In case you're wondering what's going on here with the slightly bizarre spacing of timber behind what's going to be the elements board, the reason for this bit of wood here is that this is going to take the riser for the shower. Obviously since this is kind of going to be a hollow wall, I much prefer it where the riser for the shower attaches into the timber. It's either that or you're going to have to run really long screws through to the concrete. I don't really like shower risers only being in a plasterboard or, or elements board for that matter. So yeah, this is perfectly positioned in exactly the place that the riser needs to go. I've measured it 485 millimeters from the window reveal, so I know exactly where to find it once all the tiling's done and all of that side of things. So then it's just a case of drill through the tiles and get a really nice fixing into this bit of wood. For the shower mixer valve and it's just a, a grower 
bar mixer, we like the bar mixer valves because if anything goes wrong with them, you don't have to take your entire wall to bits. The only slightly tricky thing is that you need to get your pipe centers exactly 150 millimeters apart and all level and everything before you're anywhere near installing the actual bar mixer. But what I like to use is, um, this is just a swirl bar valve wall mount kit. There's lots of different variants of these, but basically what you do is, you kind of fit your pipe work so that it's got a little bit of movement to it. This, as I say, this bit of wood will be attached to the wall so it can't move. But you make sure you've got a little bit of flex in the pipe work. And then once the wall's all tiled and everything, help with that actually open the packet. Yeah, so once the wall's all tiled, then all you do is you take these little bracket things and you pop it over the pipe. I'll show you. So that'll poke through your tiles. This has got an olive in, and then you just pop that through like that. And then you can screw that through the tiles and onto this backer board. And then that will hold the pipes in exactly the right position so that you can then fit your bar mixer. If you don't use something like this, it's very difficult to get the positioning of these exactly right. So there's a little uh, tip for you. So this is certainly the hardest part of the build in a lot of ways, mainly because, as I say, there is just nowhere to move in the property. So many rooms are out of action. There's so much dust and junk everywhere. But at the same time, it's that kind of tipping point where things are just going to get easier and easier from now on. Touch wood. Tune in next time and you'll find out if Building Control have been equally happy with the work that we've done. One thing I know a lot of you want to know is how much did this extension cost us? Obviously you haven't seen it completely finished yet and there will be a full budget breakdown a little bit later down the line. But if you just can't hold your water and you can't wait for that, I've made a video over on the member zone, which you can get access to now that tells you exactly how much this extension has cost us to date. It would be very interesting to know how much you think this extension cost us. So bear in mind that we're going to be covering all of the material costs and all of the costs that we've had to pay out to other trades. We're not covering our own time that we've had to invest into it. We're just talking about the actual money that we have physically paid out. How much do you think this extension cost? And we will run through your guesses and we will tell you exactly how much it cost in a later episode. Probably in uh, two or three episodes time, hopefully we'll have gone through all the paperwork by then. But as I say, if you can't wait, you can get a sneak peek of what I think we've spent so far. As I say, we need to kind of double check everything. But you can get a sneak peek of that over on the member zone, members.gosforthhandyman.com and you can sign up on there and you can get access to that video and a whole load of other content that you can't get access to via YouTube. Also, remember that you can follow this entire project at selfbuildextension.co.uk where we go into things in a lot more detail, things like the plans, a lot of the behind the scenes stuff that is a little bit too boring to talk about on YouTube. But if you are thinking about embarking on a project like this, hopefully you'll find it useful. For now, we will leave it there for today. As per usual, be nice to one another, look after each other, and we shall see you next time. Tatty bye.